here we are just about to start the 1 p.m. turn and you can see how the battle is developing so um, Napoleon's been delaying a long time he was staying back down at La Calou, La Calou there he's just moved here because um, the sense was that if he moved up here then Wellington would think this is definitely the main thrust at the moment there's still another corps off the remnants of the Imperial Guard are coming up they've just top bits of them have reached here but um he was wavering here giving wellington pause for thought it hasn't really worked but it, it wasn't necessary for, um, for him to to come up so um the first corps has actually moved back they had moved up to here and most of them have moved back um so that these little strips here show me where nine hexes are from the nearest enemy and once they're outside that, on this turn, on the hourly turn, um, I can decommit them. So these these units have moved up, they've had a hard slog, they they got sort of close to the front line, and it was a kind of like a feint. It was to, to keep Wellington guessing about what's going here, what's going here. That job's done because it's obvious that the main French attack is, is massing here. And so they've moved back to um, save on some exhaustion morale for them. Um, which consequently, because it's obvious how things are panning out, Wellington, who's now here, he had moved all the way over here to release uh, these um, Dutch units, um, which have been moving up. So um, they're trying to put up a defence on the flank here so that the French can't just go all the way round. And that is essentially what the um, French are doing, is they're meeting it with two brigades, and uh, cavalry and some cannons, and as an attempt to hold them while the main, while the Dutch, uh, the French thrust will be through here, in this direction. So in between Hougoumont and uh, the, the Netherlands units there. Um, speaking of Hougoumont, um, you can see that the defenders have been slowly pushed back from the gardens. They've just reinforced massively in the um, chateau itself. Um, but there are um, French stacks moving up. So that may be a protracted battle. It might, might just become isolated. So essentially, um, being has exhausted one of his um, battalions, reinforcing the, the skirmishing. Um, the small unit action here. Then he's got. An, um, then there's. Uh, things. Other battalion I think is here. We've got another elite battalion here. We got Mercer who's been happily firing away, causing various casualties, but not, not much disruption. Um, this fellow um has got his remnants of the sort of skirmish screen that was around here, retreating back there. And you can see he's got artillery moved up. The, um, there's a whole brigade um, forming up to take him down. And then they will he head on with some of the cavalry that have moved around here to remove these skirmishes and to deal with the artillery there. There's more cavalry moving up here. They will swing around to deal with these artillery. And um, so the French are going to have to make sort of frog-steppy movements each time... Um, Cavalry, artillery, infantry at this point, this point, and then they should, and, and here, and then they should break into the open. But here is quite interesting. Um, that's we've had, by the way, we've had some uh, f charges by the French, which moved skirmishes, got rid of some skirmish screens. Um, this was a, several charges, though, have been aborted as um, sort of skirmishes moved into better positions or. For example, these um, Hanoverians went into square. They were moving up from back here to take it up position in that covered way there. So they will succeed to go in, but they are quite weak. So it would be interesting if we can move this cannon, some cavalry could go round and um, charge up alley there into their flank i don't know they will probably form square but they'll be able to be pinned and then we can bring artillery up meanwhile the bulk of the french should be moving through here so um we've got the second division split between two brigades holding off these and hopefully trying to push them back and then the rest um moving this way 
Um, like I said, the Imperial Guard moving up here, they're going to, once this is cleared, they'll be able to be uncommitted until required. Um, and so what has Wellington done? Well, like I said, he re released forces around here to, to move up. So apart from Mercer's battery, another battery has arrived here. And we've got um, the third one coming up there. So that's nicely covered with artillery. But um, Wellington's run over this direction because he's um, these ones were already committed. So uh, these... Um, Dutch units have, have moved out. The Prince of Orange has taken the initiative and he's he's brought the he's swung the wing of the um the right wing of the Allied defence round here into Le uh, Papillot around that, that region, which consequently means Wellington's now coming this way. He can bring these well these um Hanoverians over to cover here and then um Uxbridge is going to bring the cavalry round so then the, the allies will be in a hook which means that some units back here will be able to move wellington was thinking to move some of these all the way along the roads or even along this road um to join their fellows here but it would just take too long it would help with their com combined command but um, it would take too long. So essentially what they're going to do is move up here so that everyone can shift leftwards. Um, or, sorry, yeah, that's the left wing for the um, Anglo perspective. Um, so their rightwards, our leftwards. And he's going to have to be quick because um, they're not activated yet. He will activate them. Then immediately we're straight back, activate some of these to meet what's happening there but um the sense is as you see this line here he's going to move them back for a line here so rather than sort of defending at right angles like that he's going to sort of just 45 degree bend so pivot around the the hills there so these units will have to um, move back this will be given up it's just performing a delaying action at the moment so he's doing what he did historically you know hanging on as long as possible waiting for um the prussians it's and it's just happening in a different way and a more exciting way for me at the moment and i think it is plausible it, it, uh, at one point i was thinking oh no this is going to diverge so much from waterloo it won't be recognizable but no it's it's the ground it's the original positions it's just a different um emphasis of attack and it is bringing in units which otherwise never sort of really just had action on the day so it's very exciting um and like i said we're at 1 p.m so um in two hours the prussians will come on and so time is is ticking for the french um and also morale because um, so the French have started reducing their committed units. The Anglo Allies are increasing, um, but the French morale get, does go down quite quickly. And essentially, the winner is the one who can break the morale of the other forces. So, if there's no way the French are going to break that morale in in two hours, that's eight turns. If they could, they would win before the Prussians come on. When the Prussians c come on, then their morale is going to be added to that. I, can't, I think that it's treated separately, so there, there will be three morales, but the, Prussian, the French would have to break both of the, those armies' morales to win. And so you can see that's going to... The French are going to keep going down, the British are going to go down, but the Prussians will come on fresh, so the French will be at a big disadvantage then. And especially then they'll have to bring on the last corps, which is going to bring their morale down even quicker. So it's that's why the Imperial Guard are going to reserve. That's why these went into reserve to hold some of the army back in freshness. It might even be possible for this first corps to hold off the French and the second corps to complete the destruction of the English. I don't know. We'll have to see how it all pans out. And I must say, it's really I'm really enjoying it. It's it's kind of for a monster game because you know there's a lot of units to move. It does take maybe an hour a turn. So for for 
No, I wouldn't say quite that long. I haven't been timing it, but it, 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 it although the time it takes a fair amount of time just to move a lot of counters and make decisions. And I'm not moving lots at the moment because most of the Anglo Allied are stationary. But you know, there's lots of decisions. Well, not lots, but you know, there's all these little decision points to make. So what I'm trying to say is that the turns. It's a monster game because it goes to 50 turns and um, I wouldn't say that would be 50 hours of play but it's going to be near 30 I would say. But the turns are going along briskly. It all moves quite briskly because it's not a headache, the system. Uh, systems wise, it's n nothing's too complicated. It ju it's just that there's quite a few things to consider. And I mean, all the game needs is um, a playbook like this, so a summary. Um, of everything so you know I've got skirmishes everything about skirmishes in note form there um, everything about shot combat in note form there everything about fight. so instead of um, having to check cases in the rule book I've, and I, I've referenced cases but I've got it all in outline here so you know once I know the rules I stuck it in here and I can just use this to play and the simple tables and then it's easy so if if the game had this with it, it would be a cinch. You just need to make it up yourself. And it's worthwhile because you're spending 30 hours or so on, on this one scenario. So um, there it is. Waterloo as it stands 1pm.